So the fact that David Beckham is the official ambassador of the Qatar World Cup pisses me off so, so much, man. To finish it off, my, my bold statement is going to be the Qatar World Cup will see a lot of injuries. It will see a lot of players um, not turning up because of the demands in the season as, as, season as well. Because as we're looking at it at this time of speaking, we're in December 2021. This time next year, the World Cup final is on uh, the 18th of December 2022. It starts in November. There's going to have people leaving in November for their warm-up games and all of that. I think it's going to be a dreadful preparation. If there's still more stops and starts because of COVID and there's going to be more games that they need to play all in one, I think we're going to see more of these players um, having heart problems like Christian Eriksen or breathing problems like Victor Lindelof. And I think it's going to be very difficult for a lot of these players to continue playing. With only two months off-season from June and July to then start the season back up again in August, to then break away in November, to then go away to Qatar, potentially away for a month and a half, two months, then come back and continue the Premier League all the way till May, June. I think that's going to be dreadful. And I think it's going to be a bad, bad thing to see how it's going I to I kind of agree with you there. Um, I think it mainly depends on what happens with with COVID. If it keeps stopping everything and like putting lockdowns and stuff on and like ruining football, it's going to make things a lot more tedious to, to say to watch it and I agree there probably will be a lot of injuries but I don't think there'll be that sort of thing I think there'll be like more muscle injuries because players haven't had like a proper rest and they don't get to like because the great thing about the World Cup being in summer is players would have a little bit of a rest period before the World Cup actually started mm-hmm. and some like, seasons and some countries finish earlier as well so they have more time to recover yeah, and Exactly, and that, I think that's the like, that's going to be the hardest thing to see. Like, I'll, I'll don't get me wrong, I'll still watch it, still be you know watching every game that I can. But I don't believe this World Cup is going to be a memorable. I re- sorry, let me rephrase that. It's going to be memorable for all the wrong reasons. I agree, and I hope I'm wrong. I'd like to be proved wrong on what I just said as well, because obviously it's going to be in an Islamic country. There's going to be um, Islamic backing um, from uh, from around the Arab nations as well for it to be successful so they can then continue to um, build and develop their own kind of stature in the footballing world like the yeah. UAE and Saudi Arabia and all of that but I think it's just the fact that it's taken so long we've seen so many human rights violated yeah uh, the fact that David Beckham is the official ambassador of the Qatar World Cup pisses me off so so much man like your footballing <laughs> hero back to Qatar World Cup after all the deaths after his mate Gary Neville goes to Qatar and sees the atrocities that have happened in Qatar in terms of how they're yeah. prepared for it. The people that have died making stadiums, the uh, underpaid labourers and everything. That yeah. annoys me. Not really the David Beckham thing, the fact that people are publicly backing this. It's just tedious, it, like you said. The book, the book, the book, the again, situation. speaking of the human rights violation, like the Newcastle takeover that was stopped before. Mm. The two reasons they gave is the human rights violation, the, f- the amount of Premier League, illegal Premier League streaming that happened in those countries. Yeah. Which issue got sold first? The one that cost them the most money? Streaming rights. Exactly. Streaming, streaming rights, rights got sold first because it's just the way it is. Yeah. 